Hey guys, welcome back to the stream. Today I'm going to be playing some game game dev tycoon. I played um I played maybe 40 minutes, half an hour to 40 minutes of this game off screen just so I know exactly how it works. I found this game for like eight bucks online or something, and it actually seems pretty fun from what little I played. Basically, your game developer, and I, it doesn't say what year it starts, but it's I think it's supposed to be like. 1983, 1982-ish, and basically you're an indie game developer, and you need to make your own... Hmm, how do I put it? Make money making games, and you can fail, of course, so I'm gonna skip the tutorial and just teach you what I'm doing while I do it. But keep in mind, I only have like a half an hour experience on this game, so don't expect to see Leet No Death playthrough MLG edition of Game Dev Tycoon, which I don't think, I don't think in Game Dev Tycoon you can die. Believe it or not, I don't think you can, you can fail and go bankrupt, I'm sure, but I don't think you can in fact be assassinated. So let's get started on this game. Huh. Apparently Joker in the chat says that you can fail terribly at this game, especially once you get into like the PS3 era large scale games, he says. Okay. Skip tutorial. Yes, it's a business simulation. The company begins right at the beginning of the PC revolution. In the next 30 years, you can build your dream company. So I'm guessing at a certain point, at the 30 year point, it cuts off and it just like looks at your score or something. I don't know. You can die, not assassinated, but everyone has a long, long life. You can die? How? Okay. We're gonna start your adventure. Yeah, right, we need a company name. Well, first we pick what we look like. I already looked through them. You're, you can't pick very many things, so I'm gonna go with that, because that looks amazing to me. Company name, uh, MDB Inc. Player name, uh, Dry Bread. Okay. What's, uh... Oh. 35 years. Yeah. Actually, if it recommends 30. Okay. It's time to develop our first game in our garage. Why the garage? I have no idea. Why that would be our studio. Alright. Uh, our first game. Well, let's pick the topic, genre, and platform before we pick the name. This is all we can do so far, sports, military, medieval, and space. I think the first game we're gonna go military. Let's do strategy. And uh, the G64. I'm guessing the G64 is supposed to be the Commodore 64, but they don't use the real names of any of these things, I don't think, so it's supposed to be Commodore 64, though. Or PC. I'm gonna go PC because longevity. I believe this game does follow realism in a sense, which means I do know for a fact that Commodore 64 kind of fails. Where it was big for a long time and then it died off and we still have personal computers. Yeah, they have mock names. So you, always, you can die of old age eventually, okay. Unless that's a modded file. Okay, uh, so we're doing a PC strategy military game. So this is going to be our very first game. It's going to be an RTS, military RTS. What do we want to name our first game? This is important. We can't call it Game 1. We need to make the real Company of Heroes. Yeah, we're, we're basically making 1983 Company of Heroes. <laughs> uh, hmm. What do we want to call it? Just make Valve and you'll be fine. Tank Wars, Platoon of Heroes. Uh, you spelled heroes wrong. You get Nintendo, Sega, Sony, Microsoft, etc. Yep. I have played a little bit and I know that like Nintendo and... Uh, or I'm sorry, Nintendo, I think they called it. But yeah, it seems to follow the, the actual historical trend of things loosely. 
Uh, you can actually make your company name develop. Yeah, but I already named my company. Um, right, game name, guys, game name. Uh, it's a, it's a military RTS made in, like, 84. <laughs> 1984. So, whoa. Naming games is something... <laughs> I've never had that achievement. There you go. That's kind of a fun one. Games of Winter Strategy Wars 84. I kind of like that one. Strategy Wars 84. It'll cost about $10,000 to get started up on this. Is it text-based or 2D? Well, we've got to do 2D graphics. If this is going to be an RTS, I don't know how you do an RTS text-based. All right, so we're, we spent 15k so far. Where do we want to put our... We're in development stage one. Uh, well, we want to go... Let's not spend much time on story and quests if we're RTS. We want to spend a lot of time on the gameplay. In fact, a lot of time on the gameplay if this is strategy. So as you see here, goes in design, it goes in technology. We get points of tech of um, research as it goes, and we can use that to learn new things for game development. We also accumulate bugs over time, especially if we aren't very talented. Those bugs will just extend the period before we release the game and start making money off of it. We can release it while it's buggy if we want, but it'll really lower the rating of the game. Again, dialogue low, artificial intelligence is incredibly important in level design, kinda, but dialogue is really low priority here. I want to spend a lot of time on the AI, if we're going to be doing a strategy game. Monthly cost of 8k. I want basic sound, I want 2D graphics, yeah. We could have no sound at all if we wanted and save 5,000, but I'd rather have basic sounds. And again, world design... Graphics, sound, not quite as important. Oh, we're done. We're just fixing up some bugs now. I want to make sure my first game has got no bugs. There we go. And we gain our skill, of course, and everything. We got quite a big bonus for a new topic combo, and it says it's a great combo. Which, I'd imagine, a lot of things go with strategy. Scrap game. No. Release game. So it took three months, we released our first game. First reviews have come in. What do people think of our game? Ah, you see, focus on gameplay. Yeah. Has its moments. Well, it's our first game. Fuck you, all games. Okay, you have nothing else to say. At least tell me what I did wrong. Okay, well, we can get into research now. Uh, we could use 10 research points to start researching some new uh, games we want to go into or new topics. I do want to save up for a custom game engine really early on, though, and just make my own game engine. Oh, favorable reviews. Sure to gain fans quickly. Okay. I want to go straight into a second game. And for a second game, I want to go text-based adventure game. So, uh, topic, space, adventure. Uh, I'm still going on PC for the sake of longevity, and this is going to be a text-based one. So, uh, hey, game, you want, you want to let me uh, change the name of my game? Hold on, I think I ran into a glitch already. Space, adventure, PC. There we go. Now it feels like working. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I'm thinking a Space Quest kind of game. I'm not going to just name it Space Quest. Star Quest. Space Conflict. <laughs> Text-based which is cheaper to develop. This looks successful. We now have 25 fans! Time for crime. Oh my god, I want that to be a... I, I want a space travel... Or I want a, a time travel adventure called Time for Crime. Okay, well... Yeah, that looks a bit right. 
Can't research while we're making a game, that's fine. Our AI does not need to be high for this. Dialogue, though, is pretty much the game. Important milestone. We've we've officially sold a hundred thousand copies of our first game. I don't know how the hell we sold that much out of our fucking garage. Basic sounds. Do we really need basic? It's only five k. It's okay. <laughs> Graphics can go. This is a text-based game. How do I even do world design in a? <laughs> Fuck it. World design's gonna be kick-ass. <laughs> I'm gonna have the most descriptive world text ever. <laughs> uh, this is not on Steam, however they're trying to get it on Steam. This is a full game though, you buy this. Uh, you're slightly late. Release game. So our second game is out there now. Let's start on research. Ah, we're so close to being able to, uh... Okay, well, let's research pirate. Yeah, let's research pirate genre, make another game, and then we'll work on our own custom game engine. Oh, first reviews for Space Conflict are coming in. Eh. Yeah. Eh. Looks like our second game's kind of a flop. Come on! My world design was amazing! I already have the next game name in mind. Oh, Strategy Wars 84 is officially off the market. I made quite a bit of money off that. Ooh, contract work. Uh, just finished space, con uh, space Conflict. Huh. Yeah, we can do contract work now, actually. Successfully researched new topic, pirate. The contract work lets us get some quick money if we want it. Also gets us a little bit of research. However, you need to have enough skill to be able to do it. I've got the skill to do a play test easily. F to get five of each within three weeks, I can do that. Let's do a quick contract. So we need to get both of those to zero before the time is out. And yeah, we're more than talented enough for playtesting. There we go. A little bit of quick cash. Every six months he's got a new contract. Okay. We lost a fan, apparently. They didn't like our new game. And uh, the other two contracts, I'm not super thrilled about the, my chance of success on those. So let's hold off on that and get on developing our third game. Pirate, a pirate simulation game for the PC. Ah, oh, well, you're gonna have to use your imagination. Sid Meier's Butt Pirates. Of, of course, a playoff, Sid Meier's Pirates. Okay. Story quest is still important on this one, but uh, gameplay is no longer not important. <laughs> I thought the chat would like that one. <laughs> uh, yeah, AI can go back up a little bit, but again, dialogue is still really important. Actually, you know what? Level design is a little bit less important on that one. Suggests that the... <laughs> Govador G64, yeah, the Commodore 64, is steadily outselling competitors in the PC market. Yeah, Commodore is really big right now, but if it follows real life, the Commodore is going to have its fall. And hey, Commodore is a lot more expensive to develop for right now. We're saving a lot of money going PC, although we are selling less copies of our game. Okay, uh, again, world design I'm not so big on right now. I'm a little bit wor more worried about graphics for this one. I'm really experimenting with really different kinds of games here. So our game is already really buggy, so we're going to spend a solid month or two on fixing the bugs before we release the game. This is before the days of the internet, really, so it's not like we can just upload bug fixes for people. Ooh, 
Ooh, we're leveling up some of our skills here. World design, gameplay, story, and quests, and dialogue have all level up. We're better at it now. Release the game. Well, this one's this one might get us some fans back. We we lost a fan after our last one. God, our first game was a huge success, but uh, they're not so hot on our follow-ups. See, we need to develop our own game. Oh my God, that's the lowest I've ever gotten. This might be more. This is more of a failure than our last one. Okay, you know what? We've got the points now. We're making our own game engine. This is gonna be what pushes us forwards. Japanese company Nintendo is preparing to launch their very own home console. That means the NES will be invented soon. successfully researched custom game engine, which means we can now develop our own game engine. However, contract work, uh, anything new I feel confident in? Not really. Okay, it's expensive to make your own game engine, and while we're making our game engine, we're not going to be able to make a game, so this will be worth it though. Our next game will be awesome. Okay. Mono sound, yeah. 2D graphics version 2. Linear story, save game. This is gonna be really expensive. You know what? Um, yeah, we still have money coming in from Sid Meier's Butt Pirates, so... I'm gonna do it. This might make us go bankrupt, but at least we're early in the game. What are we gonna go call our first one? Okay, we've got Blade Engine. That's one suggestion in the chat. What do we want to call our first game engine? Thomas the Tank Engine. Yes! Yes! Thomas the Tank Engine. Engine won't fit, so. Alright, we're making our own game engine. Thomas the Tank Engine. And we get some research points by doing it. Probably because we're learning while we make it. We're still making some money. We're losing fans fairly steadily. Apparently, uh, people aren't impressed with Sid Meier's butt pie. Oh, the, uh, the NES or the TES uh, plans to release early next year. The first cartridge-based system in this game. Because this game does not uh, include the Atari 2600. Thomas the Tank is now completed. We've made our own game engine. But Pirates is now officially off the market, so we're going to need to start developing our next game. Do we have any games currently on the market? No. All of our games are off the market now. Yeah, But Pirates was our biggest failure. We might have to make a really cheap, quick game because uh, we don't have much money to produce this one. All right, let's, let's dump out some shovelware, guys. Uh... Medieval, yeah, medieval, uh, adventure, PC, I'm Thomas the Tank Engine, and we're gonna make this thing a cheap game. As cheap as we can make it. <laughs> I like that one. There we go. War Gavel 60k. It looks like something you'd find on a floppy, like text based. <laughs> Save that money. <laughs> now, I don't know if you're allowed to go into the negatives at all in this game, so it's no saving, not even linear story. Make that game and make it fast. <laughs> Oh, sure. Yeah, local news. I'll do an interview with you. That'll get some hype for our awesome new game. <laughs> yeah, we're getting some hype for this shovelware. Could have called, should have called it Cheapscape. I'll have to remember that one. That's a good one. 
Oh my god, we have hype for this game. So I've got to say, so far, we're not a very good video game developer. I did better when I was testing. No sound. No sound for the game. Sounds expensive. Bank counts red. We'll go bankrupt if we're in negative 50k. Fix those bugs. I don't want this thing to be a complete disaster. I want this money to at least fund our next game making the most out of our engine, because we are not using our engine to its fullest right now. Oh, we leveled up a few more skills. In fact, we have every skill level two now. Oh, new research. Joystick is available. The reviews have come in for our shovelware. Wow, it's already getting better ratings than our last game. Wow, that might be our most successful game. Oh no, it's our second most successful game. Strategy Warrior Wars is still the best one. Okay, uh, we need to find contract work. Five weeks. And... You know what? We can probably do this one. We need it. We need the money. We'll do that while we wait for our sales to come in. Oh! The Nintendo Entertainment System was released. Gamepad is new research now. And thank you for the quick cash. We're now in the positive. Is this the demo version? No, I have the game. I'm doing worse than you. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not off to a good start. Any other contracts I think I could pick up real quick? I could probably do this. No, I gotta get a game. No, I don't want the money. Fuck it, we'll take up this contract, this character design one. That's right, get that thing designed. You! Okay, we've got some money now. Let's develop another game. Game number five. You know what? Could we... What can we research? Virtual pet racing fantasy sci-fi. If I had the money, I would do a racing game for the NES. But no, we don't have the money for the license yet. Research fantasy game. I want, the, I want this to be a big project. Finally get something better than Strategy Wars. We're losing fans steadily. Okay. God, we only have fans from our first game. There was no one who was a fan of other, our other games. Okay. Fantasy. It'll be a fantasy RPG. PC using the Thomas the Tank Engine. And what do we want to name this fantasy RPG? Make a game called Last Fa Make a game called Last Fantasy. <laughs> Initial Fantasy. Now, Cheapskate's gotta be for shovelware. First Fantasy, but a... <laughs> I I'm liking Initial Fantasy. Yeah, we're bumping up. 2D Graphics V2. We haven't done that before. That's expensive. This is gonna be our big, big game. We haven't done one this good in a while, and we want to put a good focus. Save game? Yeah. Linear story? You know what? No. Let's not do linear story. I want this to be kind of open world. And, uh, our shovelware is finally off the market, giving us an awful game. <laughs> Yeah, dialogue can go down, level design can go up a bit more, and artificial intelligence. Uh, world design is still really important, so I'm gonna keep that up. Mono sounds, yeah! The best sound system we've ever had in one of our games. 
Okay, we're in the red again, but when this thing sells, it'll sell big. Now, we can just leave in all the bugs and just have it be oblivion, but... Finish. New record for design and technology. We're finally working with 2D Graphics V2, which we haven't done before. We get a lot of experience in it, probably because our past experience with 2D Graphics. Alright, the game's being released, and we have a lot of research built up. We could spend some of some money and go into Joystick or Gamepad. But I think I'm just going to go ahead and, um... Sci-Fi. Yeah, start researching Sci-Fi. Alright, what do they think of Initial Fantasy? Wow! I, I told you this one would be big! I told you! Oh my god, eights and nines across the board so far! Wow! This is gonna sell like hotcakes. We're gonna get our fans back. Alright, look at that money coming in. We are making all kinds of money now. Our, our sequel is gonna have to be awesome. If the game is selling this much. 200 fan? Yeah. We're doing awesome. I really pulled ahead with that. A dun oh my god, I can make a dungeon crawler. Yeah, research that. Surprise hit with players, yep. Apparently people can't wait to see what I develop next. This is good. Okay, so the, the world's eyes are on me now. I've got a good idea for what we're going to follow up with. Uh, we don't need any quick money right now. Research gamepad. It'll cost 20k to get, but we're researching the gamepad. Massive success on the NES. As good because the next game I want to make on the NES. It's going to be a big difference. So far all of our games have been PC. Okay, develop a new game. It's going to be a, it's going to be a dungeon crawler, dungeon crawler RPG. Now the license cost is a one-time cost of 80k, so that's a lot of money. But we can now develop on the TES, and it's 30k just to develop on, so it's expensive. We're using, our, of course, our Thomas the Tank Engine. Our dungeon crawler. What's a good name for an NES dungeon crawler? Dragons in Dungeons. I like that one. I like that one. Don't use twice the same. I, I'm. I, we haven't done a dungeon game before. Secondary fantasy. No, this one's a dungeon crawler. Diabolo. <laughs> Diabolo would be pretty great. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I can do another RPG. I mean, this one's a dungeon one to combine it with. Guys, make make your names related to the genre, at least. Uh, yeah, I'm for Diabolo. You know, um, from My Immortal. Diabolo. Like, the thing you throw. It's gonna be expensive. We're gonna go into the negatives during this, probably. Unless our game is still selling, which I don't remember if it is. Yeah, put a lot into gameplay on this one. Yeah, looks like our game isn't selling anymore. It's off the market, finally, so, uh... Gonna go into the red here. Level design. Want to world design, want to make sure these dungeons are creative. Oh, we've hardly got any bugs in this game. We can release this really quick. New record on both. And we're finally skilled with uh, the version 2 of 2D graphics. Release that game, and while we're waiting for that to come in... Uh 
debug a program for these guys? Yeah, we'll do that real quick. What do people think of Diabolo? Is this a good sequel? Or is this a good follow-up game? Wow. Not quite as high ratings as the last game, but still really high. Eight, and our recent one was 8.5, was even better. Okay, well, let's see what people think of our new game. <sighs> Increasing variety of game devices also creates a market for more specialized games. Oh, we can now do target audience. Yeah, after we're done with this contract, I think we need to research a little more. Thank you for the quick cash. Research, uh, target audience. This'll be a bit expensive, but it'll really help our game sell. Almost perfect. Yeah, we're really raking in the fans now. And the money. Uh, Venna, I think it's supposed to be Sony. Or, it's not Sony, uh, Sega, rather. Target audience, research complete. What other research can we do right now? Airplane, government, uh, racing, virtual pet. God, I can make my own version of Shadow President. That game was fun. I think we're gonna go straight into the next game. Okay, so we can now pick what our target audience will be. I think the next game is going to be, um, what have we not done? We haven't done a sports game. Um, well, it's got the action of sports. Yeah, let's do a sports game on the NES. Hand egg. Uh, what, what year would it be roughly now in game? Uh, let's see, year three, and it started in 80. F it, well, it doesn't say the starting years, but it really it was 84. So I guess we're 86 now. Hand egg 86. Quop. I could make my own quop. <laughs> Story and quests can go way the hell down if this is a sports game. Put a lot of time on, into gameplay. I do rock. However, whatever the hell you said was censored, so... <laughs> waiting for a Steam release? Yeah, I'm waiting for a Steam release, too. I want to see, like, what achievements and stuff, and if they would be able to integrate any... Well, I guess they wouldn't have multiplayer, but, you know... Built into Steam high scores where you could check with your friends, that'd be cool. Uh, level design, it's... No. AI is important. Level design and dialogues, no. This is a sports game. Never bought him anything completely. Hey, for, for any of you who don't regularly come to the streams or the forum, yet you've, uh, you've listened to the new, today's, uh, new Creepypasta reading, if you heard me say Moderator Doug in the, uh, in the afterthoughts of it, that's, uh, that's Douglas there in the chat, that's Moderator Doug. He's a moderator both here and on the forum. Alright, uh, world design? There's not much I can do for that. Graphics and sound. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the Master System is in development. The Master System was a fairly shit console, if you ask me. The Genesis was a pretty great one, though, or the Mega Drive, depending on where you live. Oh, ooh, I made a bug 
in the release there. That sucks. I didn't know you could do that. New research, open world. Oh my god. We could we could like take a big project with open world. It's expensive. Let's do it. Research open world. Will we get our money coming in from this new game? So what do people think of hand egg? Mm. Yeah, it looks like they're not so hot on that compared to our last few games. It's still some money, although we did spend a lot on developing that one. Okay, so we've researched open world. Open world government! Now we want racing next. Never bottom out I didn't bottom out anything, Joker. I just came close to it. Steering wheel unlocked. Uh, martial arts, government, airplane, virtual pet. Martial arts. God, yeah, I want a martial arts game. When the time comes, you should make Call of Duty, then make it over and over and over. <laughs> it looks like the Master System got released. Man, I gotta tell you, in my practice run, I was making way more money than this. I'm clearly making some mistakes in this run. I had a new studio by this point. Yeah, let's, um... Three weeks? I think I can do that. We're a pretty talented guy now. Uh, I don't think we can do it in time. There's a penalty for you if you don't do it in time. Uh, come on, do it faster, do it faster! You're almost done playtesting it, just, just a little bit more, buddy! Ah, uh, we lost money. Fuck. <laughs> okay, let's just develop our next game. Martial arts, action... We're going to go back to the PC on this one. I want to save some money. Thomas the Tank Engine. It'll be a children's fighting game. Bro Smasher. <laughs> Karate, senior citizen. Will that fit? Because that's amazing. Oops. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with that. Karate, senior citizen. For children. Yeah, we've made a PC game in a while. Let's go back to that market. See what we can squeeze out of it. Okay, story and quests kind of matters to keep them entertained, but gameplay is still my focus on this one. Let's uh, raise that. Uh, dialogue can still stay low on this one. What sound can go a little down on this. There. The bubbles are so cute. I do like the little sound effects. Oh man, we made a pretty fucking buggy game. We've really got to spend time on fixing that. New research. Casual games. Well, it's a safe market. It's just a shitty market. Well, that last bug took a while. Oh, we're getting better. We're getting a lot better. Wow, level three everything. Apparently that was a great combo. Simple cutscenes, better dialogue, level editor, better AI, 2D graphics, level three, and 3D graphics level one. Oh my god. We have a lot to research now. Better AI. You know what? Research better AI. We're making a sequel to Strategy Wars.
Martial arts and action is a great combination. This seems weird to me, that that's something worth pointing out in a review. You want 3D graphics, you want it now? I'll keep that in mind. Yep, the Commodore 64 is starting to fail. Better AI. And we'll make... Yeah, our next strategy game is going to be 3D with better AI. That'll be a hell of an RTS at this age. It'll be an expensive one, but we're producing on PC, so it's not going to be too horrible. Uh, why did re oh, research stop for all? That was weird. Okay. Topic. We're going to do a sequel. And I might lose... I might lose a little bit of, uh... Part of me is saying that they might be a little bit less impressed since it's the same combination we've done in the past. However, it's been a long time, and it was one of our most popular games. We might need to make a new engine at some point. Our engines kick ass, but we could probably make a better one. So this will be a strategy wars, uh, what, what is it, year four? So this is uh, 88, strategy wars 88. I can't do 3D, odd. Not sure why, I finished researching it. You know what, I probably can't on this engine. Okay, well I'll make a new engine eventually. I'll make it soon actually. Oh, they're working on the uh, Game Boy. Yeah, I need to make my own 3D engine. I'll get on that soon. Right after this game, in fact. Yeah, AI is still really important here. How did Karate Senior Citizen go? Ah, uh, decently. Profit of about a thousand, or a uh, hundred thousand. I think what hurt me early on, that didn't hurt me when I playtested a bit, is that when I was playtesting, I did work a lot on the Commodore 64, and it seemed like that paid off quite a bit. Yeah, because I wasn't even this far into the game yet, and I already had my own studio with staff and stuff. Ow. probably research a few things. New engine, make a new fantasy game. Yeah, I definitely need to make a new engine. We don't have much money right now, but we should be making some from this whole thing. I might even take a contract during this whole phase. I want the next game to be a big one. Level editor, version th eh, 2D graphics. Better dialogue. Simple cutscenes wouldn't be bad. Um, mm, yeah, we already have fantasy. And that's what I want right now, so I'll take simple cutscenes research. We might go bankrupt soon. Now, what was our most successful game again? Okay, that was an 8, 6.5, eh, 8. 8.5, I think that initial fantasy was our biggest one. And then we had a, a bunch of flops back there, yeah. 8.5, initial fantasy was our biggest game then. I remember that one made us a lot of money. New research marketing, that's an important one. How much is that gonna cost? 
too much right now. We need to focus on making our second game engine. It actually costs less money to go 3D graphics. We could include both if we wanted, but I don't want to. Yeah, we want games pad support. Better AI, open world. This is gonna be an expensive one. Oh my god, is this gonna be an expensive one? It'll be worth it if you don't go bankrupt before the next game. This one's gonna take us a while to make, so let's hope that money keeps pouring in from Strategy Wars 88. I do like that we get some research during it, too. Game names play into it? Bad game name equals bad sales? Wow. I wonder how it determines what's a good and bad name. See, I never even knew there was a goal hint for that. I, I passed a million so much earlier in the game when I was playing it off-screen. Our tenth game? I had eleven games, though, by then. Like, I was almost constantly just pumping out games. Okay, fantasy. E for everybody. Uh, RPG. Should be RPG or advent? RPG. For the PC. With our new, much better engine. And what do we want to call this game? Well, wait, PC is at 16%? Oh, I haven't been paying attention to the percents. I probably should have. Pick genre, RPG, PC. Oh, wow, yeah, it's actually really low. Um, we're gonna put it on the... Oh, wow, they're all really low then. Uh, I was gonna say I, I could put it on the NES, but uh, no, because it costs so much. So we're gonna stay with PC. Yeah, it'll sell a ton, but we don't have the money for the licensing and everything. No, I'm not doing Fall In. That's lame. And plus, this is a fantasy game. Second fantasy... Secondary fantasy? No, it's not the same series. This one's open world, remember? Well, mm, I guess you could make an argument for a lot of those, but not the modern. Well, this is 3D open world, which you could also make an argument for, I guess. Your ideas all suck and you suck. 3D graphics. Wow, this is actually kind of cheap for beginning 3D graphics. Well, probably fucking vector graphics. <laughs> cry, chat. Cry. Gamepad support, of course. Better AI. That's pretty important. Level design for open world seems like it'd be really important. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Game Gear fucking sucked. for design. And we might as well start on some research. I want to do marketing soon. But uh, let's actually take a contract because money's really rough right now. Ch 
chat sucks comes in. Oh, apparently people really agree with me. Sorry, chat. You suck. 10 out of 10. Oh my god. Oh, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> we were so close. Wow, we're gonna be making some money off this. This is our biggest success. Set a new standard for the early gaming industry. Wow. It has already sold over 100,000. Already. We gained over 1,000 fans on the preliminary sales. Okay, we have 1.5 million. We're moving up. <laughs> wow! New office. We can hire staff. Oh my god. Thanks, chat. You sucking got me a promotion. Oh no, we lost 5,000. Okay. Um, we need to... What do we need to do? Train, staff management... We need to we need to hire someone. <sighs> Industry professionals say that Chat Sucks is one of the rare games that will set the new quality standard for future games. Uh, it seems MDB Inc. really has made gaming history with Chat Sucks. Well done. Well done, Chat. This is all thanks to you, and your bad name suggestions. <laughs> Thank you for letting me use you as a stepping stone for my success. Alright, let's, uh, let's fill that position. Let's hire someone. Okay. Complex algorithms, game demos, or show reels. I don't know which one does which, so I'm gonna go with complex algorithms. And I want to spend... Two million dollars on finding the right staff. <laughs> One of the many fans of Chat Sucks commented, I can't believe they didn't do it without a proper office. It was created by only one guy in his sucky chat. <laughs> Just as I insult the chat, I, I had someone leave. Uh, did you know? Yes, of course I know that all Civilization games are 2D. I have every Civilization game. Alright, uh, let's, uh, not a custom, we've, we're good for engines right now. Yeah, uh, playtest, or, yeah, playtest. Get some quick money. Wow, Commodore 64 is gonna be taken off the market soon. Sorry, chat. Game doesn't recognize your hard work. <laughs> Even though almost every name was come up by you guys. Alright, we can get our uh, people now. I think speed is probably pretty important. 11k per month? That's not bad at all. Peggy Day. You work for me now. Okay. Okay, we need to train her with the with the staff welcome training. So I could train myself. I believe you start off with 300 in both skills. Before I get on training, I need to research a little. I want to research marketing. Oh, we don't have enough research points. Okay, um, get started on a game. Actually, uh, before you get started on a game, I want a new genre. I want, uh, I want a government game. Yeah. Yeah, you missed a lot. 
Yeah, I lost two million hiring her. I spent a lot of money on finding the right employees. All right, we can get started on the next game now. Government simulation for the Game Boy. No, um, uh, highest market share is Game Boy for the Game Boy. <laughs> Oops, uh, not Thomas the Tank, Frostlick for everyone for mature. If it's gonna be a government simulator, okay. Can we think of a good um pocket gov? America, how to fuck everyone? Um, can we think of a good, um, can we think of a good, uh, playoff shadow president? The game system is bad for mature. Does that play into it? Yeah, it probably does play into it. Let, we'll make it for everyone then. Dark Prime Minister. I like it. Just barely fits. 3D on the Game Boy. With gamepad support. I think we're gonna take away gamepad support. It's a, well, unless the, the built-in controller. Okay. Gameplay can take a bit of a dive on this one for story and quests. No, we're not even doing the Game Boy Color. This is just the Game Boy. Peggy Day. We wrote it on the floor behind her in duct tape. Better AI? Yeah. I don't know how you have level design in a government game. Dialogue's important. I like how the game we're making has nothing to do with the console. This is completely should be a PC game. Open world government game. It's probably got a poor kid's shit list. It's just, I picked it because it has the highest market share. Great combo. And you release the game. We can do that one. What do people think of Dark Prime Minis- Oh, God. Uh, yeah, I think we picked the wrong console for this one. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty bad. <laughs> Man, apparently it can only make a successful game when I'm making fun of the chat. I'll, I'll keep that in mind and make fun of you more. Level editor, uh, marketing. And uh, you can design a game for pirate. Does it tell me what, uh, I don't know what each one does. So you are going to worry about research right now. Give me a new topic, I want a UFO game. Fallen way below expected numbers. Yeah, I'm losing fans pretty fast, too. XCOM, fully aware. Medium games, I don't even know what that means. But I want it. Oh, can't research anymore. Okay, lady, get uh, get training. No, I need research points for that too. Wow. Okay, you're just gonna sit here for the, for now then. Can I fill more positions? Hire up to four employees in this office. Yeah, I I think just the two of us will do for now. Hmm. 
Mmm, publishers. Woo! I'm looking forward to dealing with publishers. It's time for the horror stories to start. Okay, uh, transport, any genre, by Capcom. Transport not researched. Uh, we don't have the license for them. So wait, who's that? Who, uh, who wanted me to publish that? Yeah. Hold on. TGQ, is that supposed to be THQ? They they went bankrupt. <laughs> uh, I'm liking the looks of this one. Medieval strategy? Yeah, I can do this. This is right up our alley. Small? No, medium. We're doing a medium game. Pick game engine? Frost Lake. We might even make a new game engine soon if we get rich enough. E for everyone. Whoa! Oh god. I think we fucked the video game. I don't know what we did, guys! <laughs> Speaking of good game design and bad game design, someone fucked up on this game. How much do you miss? I think like an hour? How long have we been going, guys? An hour? Oh, God! <laughs> I love that. I found a glitch in the game. Well, I found a glitch. I found poor game design. That's what I found. This is not even really a glitch. Uh... Uh, Evil Blade of Fire, Super Mario TD, Era of Empires, Era of Umpires. Zzz. I hope that counts as a shitty name. <laughs> Peggy, get contributing. Like small games, one uh, person cannot effectively be responsible for every task of the game. If you get a good game, make best use of your team and assign them to responsible areas. Alright. Well, Peggy completely blows at design, so we're not going to get her on design. Oh, we drag the staff on the things, okay. So, this is all design stuff, I think? I don't know what helps with what. I would assume design helps with gameplay. Tech would probably help with... Story? I don't know. Uh, do I see in the chat any answers on that? House of Horror. God. <laughs> Yeah, I should make House of Horror, and then I should make 20 more of them. Drag staff. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. You can tackle both of those then. We need more research. It sold awful. Yeah, that's our biggest failure of a game yet. In fact, we've had net losses from that game. Make a 2D... Uh, Make a 2D platformer called Mediocre Man. It'll sell millions. Uh, better me. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, I will tackle... AI. And, yeah, we'll do... That. It looks like he's pretty exhausted. You know what, Peggy? You might have to tackle two of these things for me. Just so I don't go into a fucking coma. You're overloaded? Well, get me the coffee. Uh, this can be pretty equal, I think. There we go. Don't pass out. Ooh, pretty far into red now. Yeah, we might need more staff. Probably shouldn't have spent two million dollars looking for the right guy. Ah, 
great new combo. Yeah. Please feed us. Find contract work. Yeah, logo animation, anything. The era of umpires is in. I was hoping for better than that. Ah, come on, RTSs, that's our specialty. Yes, the Genesis. I'm sorry, the Oasis. Man, we need to develop for that. <sighs> got a penalty, fuck. Oh no, no, they got us our money, okay. Oh, but they gave us a huge penalty for the game we made for their- damn publishers. Okay. We're, uh, we're doing bad. We had that one huge success, but that was about it. We need a new game engine. That's what we... No, we don't need a new game engine because there's nothing better we can make right now. I think we may be at a point where we shouldn't continue with our company. We'll try one more publishing deal. We'll make it your goddamn adventure game. Yeah, it'll be a medium project. Your UFO adventure g No, I think we should make it a martial arts adventure game. Alright, for children. And it will be called World of Chu. Thank you, Doug. All right. Now the real challenge, being able to feed ourselves. I'm gonna just, yeah, put a little bit more work on Peggy on that one. That's not a good combo? Shut up. Ever played Karnov? Oh, wait. Does, uh, does Karate for NES, does that count as a martial arts adventure game? Or would that count as a fighting game? I'm really not sure. Let's just, yeah, equal that out a little. Yeah. Yeah. Remember your 3D Game Boy game? Uh, a total success- my 3D government Game Boy game. Are you telling me there's something wrong with that? Give them a vacation? No, we can't afford a holiday, Peggy. Drink your coffee and develop your game. Some really dedicated fans of Diabolo created a fan game. They don't make any money and they just uh, seem like follow fans. Legal advisor strongly suggests we don't let them do it. Fuck you, they can make their fan game. Uh, sorry, Peggy, but if you go into a coma, at least I can still develop. Have you ever played San Andreas? Yes, in fact, I've played it on the stream before. Uh, developer of the Diabolo fan game. I'm happy to say that you- I'm happy to see that you didn't kick our ass. You've gained 306 fans. Smiley face! Uh, the design and technology is not as good as it used to be. Ah, oh, she got a raise. Yeah, that's fine with me. Day-night cycle, AI companions, character progression. I call bullshit that it took this long for AI companions, because there were AI companions in the early Ultima games, in like the 80s. <laughs> 3D martial arts adventure game on the fucking Game Gear. Load up your AA batteries. The thing took like eight AA batteries. I had a friend with a Game Gear, that thing sucked. What do people think? Oh. Oh. Ooh. 
six double A's? Yeah. <sighs> told you, fuck off. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be a failure, I told you guys that much. It was our last, last ditch effort. Roll of two. Uh, yeah, that's a hefty penalty. I think we're going to overdraft. Yeah. Yeah. Nah, go bankrupt. You're bankrupt. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yep. We'll start over another day, but I think that's enough for, uh, for this game today. Go ahead and close that. And I'll put on the five minute break screen for a moment while we switch games. I do already have a game in mind. Let me put on a little bit of music while you wait for the game to actually be up. There we go. And you guys are going to hear a YouTube video for a second while I pause it. My browser is opening back up so I can change the stream name. Also, if you think your computer is shutting down, no, your computer is not shutting down. Just thought I'd let you know. That was actually me getting an email now that I opened my browser. I love this song, too. That's why I play it. And there we go. Stream name changed. And the emails are three subscribers and a comment on Pokemon Creepypasta Gary's Back. So thank you to Brook Cats, Purple Cats, and Codmaster45332 for subscribing. You're probably not in the stream right now, but if you are... Oh, there you go. Okay, let me get the game ready. Open up the software. The right game set? Yes, it is. It's gonna be really loud for a second, guys. Oh no, I managed to bring in the volume in time. Seeing it soon. Actually, I still need that browser open, don't I? Yes, I do. I like your email sound. Thank you. You just heard it again. Nope. Why not? Yes. And there we go. Have to give that a second. And if I pop that out, that means that can be on screen. I just got another email. A comment on I'm streaming game dev tycoon. You know what? I'm gonna check to see if it's some asshole saying first. Cause I'll, do you post your streams? Yes. In fact, I have been for a long time and I recognize that name, so I don't know how that person doesn't know I post my streams. People baffle me sometimes. I love when people post first first on videos because every time they do, I delete their post. I don't think they're aware I do that. But yeah, if you post first, I'm just gonna delete it. And if you post first enough, I'm just gonna block you. Okay. So that's up. Let me grab the gamepad. There we go. Looks like that screen is ready. Okay, which means I can bring the music back down. And it's almost ready. Yes, I do recommend you guys buy a t-shirt. I made it as dirt cheap as I could. I only make a buck off those t-shirts, but it saves you guys a lot of money. And let me switch to... You can hear the game. You can see the game. There we go. That, that, there we go. And I think I already know what the first match has to be. 
Computer versus computer. I think it's gotta be between Ultimate Marco and the newly made Brad Ward. Now, I'm just gonna watch the chat, and you guys let me know if any of you know uh, who these two are. I wish I could buy a t-shirt, however, I'm only in 8th grade. Don't worry about it. It's not like the t-shirts are any good anyway. You guys might remember Socks Mahoney, both from being on my previous stream, as well as me linking his stream that he did the other day. Yeah, Socks Mahoney uh, kind of takes care of his own little uh, wrestling league thing on YouTube and Twitch. That's really awesome. And uh, the main feud in the company right now is Ultimate Marco versus Brad Ward, so I took it upon myself to make both of them in this game, move set, a likeness, and all, and put them in the game. And uh, he seemed pretty impressed with that. He hasn't seen the Brad Ward yet, though. Brad Ward is the one with the short hair, whereas Ultimate Marco is the one with the beard and, and shoulder length hair. And I will actually be back in one moment, and I'm going to let you guys watch this, because I'm going to go get myself a little bit of water. I have returned. I hope the match has been riveting. Now, personally, I want to know who all of you are cheering for, Ultimate Markout or Brad Ward, but uh, I'm going with Ultimate Markout, my personal favorite from his promotion. Although that was a nice drop toe hold there by Brad Ward. Although a much better gut buster there. Strained the pinfall, an intelligent maneuver, of course. The referee for this night, by the way, is Charlie, or Cronish, as you might know him in the chat. Because yes, in this game, you can create your own referees, and it's amazing, because this game is amazing. I still think Charlie will win. Charlie will win one of these. He's gonna rip off his shirt, and there's gonna be like, fucking like, he's gonna be beefy as fuck and have armbands, and then he's gonna like knock them both out and then count his own pinfall on them. God, I love this game. You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna crank the volume on a little bit. You guys just let me know if you can hear me okay, okay? Just let me know if the game's too loud or too quiet or what. Ah, that's a nice looking super kick in this game. You can hear me? Good. Nice headlock there. I hate games where all the number is 10 to win. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Think you should make Walter White a character? Are you referencing my incredibly old failed trailer for a failed series of Tales of Walter White Crest? Or is there an actual dude called Walter White? Because if so, bravo on remembering that failure of a series. Not sure how to pick, you know nothing about wrestling? Well, neither of these guys exist in the real life. So these are two people that Sox Mahoney has in, in his own promotion that I made on my own for fun. Walter White is from Breaking Bad. Oh, well, I made the original one then, because I made my character before Breaking Bad was a show. Which is the dad from Malcolm in the Middle. That's amazing. You saw it once, couldn't get into it. Yeah, I don't really watch TV. I, I watch wrestling occasionally, though. Um, I mostly watch Raw and um, TNA. Although I do watch um, 
SmackDown on occasion. And I do watch, actually, uh, I think this WWE main event is actually not bad. I actually really like it. Yeah, apparently Breaking Bad stole the idea from me. I'm gonna sail. Uh-oh. Ooh! Redward hit his finisher, the Bratitude Adjustment! He got a knockout on it! Wow. I think that's Ultimate Markout's first singles loss. At least first singles loss that I've seen. Yeah? Ultimate Markout knocked out by Brad Ward. Did you get to see Total Divas, Madra? No. No, I didn't watch Total Divas. Believe it or not. <laughs> Total Divas just doesn't exactly sound like the most interesting thing to me. Oh, Joker wants to fight, fight Mark out. Okay. Fresh off his injury, I see. Capitalist. Alright, if you want to fight him, sure. Eventually, the same match type and everything. Let's see how you fare against the ultimate mark out. Or the ultimate mark, ultimate mark out. I don't know if this is the last game I'm streaming. Joker immediately lures him. That was a good move there. He keeps trying to throw him off the ropes and get him with a Russian hook. That would hurt. Open palm thrust uh, attempt there. Went for like a hook with a palm thrust. All right, so who's everyone? Uh, you're sla That's not slapping. That's palm thrust. There's nothing bitchy about a palm thrust. That is a legitimate move that'll break your goddamn nose. And plus, this is a Japanese wrestling game. Chops hurt like a bitch. Nothing not manly about slapping. Everyone knows a good slap to the ear will knock you out. Uh, Madrai, do you remember who was on your last Screenshot Warfare? Uh, that was Voitech 1985. See, look at that nice jumping overhead chop right to the head. Yeah, I won't be streaming Evil Genius tonight. Exactly. A solid slap to the ear will really throw off your balance. Some counters in the corner there. Joker is doing surprisingly well here against Ultimate Markout. Oh, this might turn it around. Tornado DDT out of the corner, planting Joker's head right into the mat. So you just got this game? Nice choice. Oh, Ultimate Mark Shooter. I got out of it fast. Yeah, this game is still my favorite wrestling game. It's amazing. So for those of you wondering, the finishers of uh, Ultimate Mark Out are the Spike Pile Driver, and his main finisher is the Lariat. And the finisher of Joker is a Double Arm DDT. Nice rolling back chop to the back of the head. Oh. Mark out going for the uh, small package, but it can only get him down for one count. Nice chin lock, planting the knee right into the middle of the back as he wrenches back on the jaw. Yeah, who are you, who are you guys cheering for, chat? Everyone let me know who you're cheering for. I'm cheering for Mark out again. Sorry, Joker. I know you've been here a long time and everything. Oh my god. But Mark out, I just can't see Mark out losing two matches in a row. Mark out's a good character. Marco's a main eventer. Ooh! Laying into him with those elbow buttons. Joker's actually really taking control with his heavy strikes. Marco's not having a good night. Yeah, I might actually be turning around on this. Joker's really got him. Marco's gotta get some distance. Oh, he's got him in a front face lock. He's trying to take control here. Marco's gotta go for a submission or something. Try and ground him for a little while. I'm gonna root for whoever wins. Oh, only a one count. Ooh, ooh, gut buster. That might turn around the momentum a bit. And some nice strikes there. Who goes for the Fujiwara armbar to wrench back on it? Doesn't last very long though. He might try to wear down. 
Nice. He might try to wear down the arms a little bit. Try and neutralize some of those punches and strikes. Nice! Running palm thrust just cracks his jaw. Gets a two count on that one. A well, little bit of circling there. Looks like uh, Marco's trying to stay out of punching range. Oh, nice jawjacker there. And a big rolling wheel kick right across the temple. Joker's moving slow. Looks like he's out of stamina, but he gets that palm thrust again. He's gasping for air. Oh, super kick right to the jaw. Picks him back up by the hair. Marco, oh, he's going for the spike pile driver. Drops him right on his head. Looks like Marco to... Uh, oh, he's going for the lariat! Oh, Joker got out of the way of the lariat in time. That could have been the... It could have been it for it. Oh, vertical suplex floors him. He's going for the lariat again. He got him with the lariat. Roll him over with the pin. Hooks the leg. One, two... A two and a half count as Joker manages the kick out of the lariat. I could make people from Screenshot Warhead. That's a decent idea. Thank you, Minecraft. I'll toy around with that idea. By the way, um, I don't know if you're new to the streams uh, very much, or at least new to the wrestling streams because I haven't been streaming much recently, but I do make fans in these games at request. Like Joker, for instance. He's a fan from the chat, and he's in the game. We need some jobbers for fun. The chat is kind of the jobbers in a way. Although we do need some jobber, like some real jobbers. Because the chat, I try to make them all pretty balanced. We need some people who are unbalanced, like intentionally weak. Ooh! Nice back counter there by Joker. Just jacked his jaw with the jawbreaker. We got a two count off that, too. Ooh! Yeah, I accidentally made Doug a tank. I didn't mean to make Doug as invincible as I did. Spike pile driver. Joker's in bad shape. He hasn't had a much breathing room in quite a Oh, he's trying to get some air right now. That's good. He needs it. But uh, he's pretty injured by this point. I think one good Larry or pile driver, and it might be it for Joker. Yes, you can be one. Oh, you oh sleeper hold. No, he got it. Uh, if you want to be in the game, all you need to do is email me at madrot567, that's my YouTube URL, is madrot567, someone could type that in the chat for me, that'd be nice, at gmail.com, you email me there and you attach a picture or two of yourself, and if you have any personal requests at how you would like to wrestle or finishers, just let me know in that email and I'll include them. Thank you, Doug and Ed. Yes, a real picture of yourself, and I'll make you. So this is actually what Joker looks like. This is all the people in the chat are actually what they look like. Oh, he threw him into the corner there. Could be going for a big move here. <laughs> Some nice chops right across the upper chest. Rolls him over. Only a two count. Those corner moves tend to be pretty powerful. Nice! Slapped him right upside the head on that one. Oh, low blow. Looks like the ref missed that. Taunting the crowd there. Pulls him back up by the belt loop. German suplex. Bridge him for the pin. One, two. Uh, could people request to be... Yeah, if you don't want to be a wrestler and you want to be a referee instead, I could do that. He going for it. He's going for that German suplex again, but looks like he's got his feet on the rope. Yep, ref's got to break that one up. It's not a legal pinfall. Front face lock. He's bringing him over into the corner. Could it be going for a diving move? No? Ooh. Right to the kidney. Going for... Oh, he's up to the top rope. Elbow drop, but Joker gets out of the way and he plants his elbow into the mat. Smack him right upside the back of the head. No, this is a PlayStation 2 game. Throws Joker into the opposite turnbuckle, runs at him, Lariat right in the corner, nowhere to go. Joker counters back with some Russian hooks, brings him back down to the mat, and goes for a cocky pinfall. Two, almost a three count, this is a good match. 
Oh, roll a pin out of nowhere. He's got him in the small package. One, two, a two count once again. Joker's really holding his own against Ultimate Mark out in this match. Two. Hey, don't worry if you're fat. No judgment here. There have been plenty of fucking awesome fat wrestlers. Have you seen Abdullah the Butcher? Giant fat dude, awesome wrestler. Sometimes being fat really adds to the look. So, no judgment here. Yeah, what about some- there have been lots of- Oh! Double arm DDT! Double arm DDT! Joker's finisher! One! Two! Oh! Got his finisher and he almost finished him off there with it. Um, yeah, there have been some pretty huge Samoan dudes. Yeah, that second- you spelled it right that second time. Yeah, there have been some pretty massive Samoan wrestlers, and, uh, they're awesome. Fucking Rikishi. You guys remember Rikishi? Amazing wrestler in his day. Uh, this is looking bad for Joker. Ultimate Marquez getting- well, they're both taking this time to get a breather, at least. Yeah. A huge fat dude with uh, with a running splash or diving splash as a finisher is one of my favorite things in wrestling. You remember back when uh, Three Minute Warning would do the diving splashes as their finishers? It looked amazing. Oh, sleeper hold. Cold for the bell. Looks like Joker tapped out to a sleeper hold 20 minutes into the match. Keep in mind, that's not 20 minutes in real time. The game does go a little bit faster than normal. The match was probably more like 15 minutes. Ultimate Market pulls it a win near the end. No, I guess at the end. Yeah, how about we go uh, Doug versus Mr. Turok for the next one? That'll be fun. Doug versus Mr. Turok in a barbed wire death match. Yeah. And we're gonna keep with Charlie for the ref, because Charlie's gonna ref for this stuff. Epic battle, yeah, I like that song. So we're gonna do Doug. We're going against Mr. Turok. No, please, no! Hey, if you win Mr. Turok, you'll be known as quite the bass for beating up Doug. Yeah, I think, uh, I think, um, Ultimate Markout needs to rest for the night. He's been through some grueling matchups. Whoa. You see, Doug tried to throw him right into the barbed wire early there. I hate me too, Mr. Turok. Straight punch right to the face with a checking jab. Looks like Doug, Doug really in the match tends to kind of get some space and go for checking jabs and strikes here and there. A nice heavy elbow shot early on, though. Stops himself from going into the ropes. He's trying to stay- it looks like Doug's trying to stay in striking distance here, whereas Mr. Turok wants to go in for grapple. And I right there, but this is a no-DQ match, so that's not an illegal maneuver. Test of strength in the middle of the ring. This game is called Fire Pro Wrestling Returns for the PlayStation 2. Nice scoop slam there by Mr. Turok, overpowering Doug. Met with another heavy elbow shot upside the head. Front face lock takedown there. Oh, went for a few headbutts, missed both, rakes the eyes though, goes for a Russian hook, misses again. Backs up to the ropes, another eye rake. Eye rake again! Doug really taking advantage of this no DQ match, but Mr. Truck still manages to pull it with another scoop slam. Ooh, punch to the gut followed by a Russian hook there. Gets him a little bit of space that he needs to recover. Blocks the punch, hit, counters with a nice hook, picks him back up. From face lock, elbows them right in the kidney from behind, but knocked back off with an elbow. This is a really good near matchup, really back and forth so far. I say as Doug pulls out a nice gut wrench suplex, the biggest power move of the match so far. Ooh, nice scoop slam onto that broken piece of uh, wood there. Arm, <laughs> arm takeover. Oh, no, not ready to throw into the ropes yet. Oh. But Doug goes flush back first right into the barbed wire. That's gotta mess him up. Ooh! Doug manages to counter back with a nice gut wrench suplex right onto a steel chair. That's gotta hurt your back. So both of them are reeling from that one. Huge punch! Mr. Dork's face! 
lands right on the sludge hammer, and he's met with two elbow drops to the back of the skull off the sludge hammer. Mr. Turok must be struggling to stay conscious at this point. He goes for a headlock there, goes for a sleeper hold on the ground, but doesn't manage to lock him in for much. Nails him right in the jaw, another elbow drop to the back of the skull, another two elbow drops to the back of the skull. Doug is really taking control, a hook to the face, huge punch right to the gut. From behind, nice atomic drop lifted right back up into a back suplex in the corner. There is no rope break in this match, so this is a legal pin attempt. Mr. Truck still manages to kick out after his head has been pummeled. And a nice counter throwing Doug right back into the barbed wire. Oh, now Mr. Turok into the barbed wire. Doug dragging him away from the barbed wire and goes for a pin. One, two. Mr. Truck is still able to kick out after what has to be multiple concussions. And Doug hits his finisher with the, with the inverted Russian leg sweep face buster. One, two. Still a clean cookout by Mr. Turok, who's... Oh, oh, it looks like Mr. Turk was going for his finisher there, but it got countered. Oh. Nice! A fruit bat suplex just folds him. Hits the face buster again, rolls him over, hooks the leg. Thank you, Five Edgy. And, oh, kick out. Last minute there, you can hear the crowd cheering there. This is a good matchup. Rush and Hook takes him down. Football tackle there takes him down again, picks him up one more time. Almost gets thrown to the ropes though. Oh, and a second attempt. Met with a back chop. And a jaw breaker takes him down, gets Mr. Trump a little bit of space that he needs to recover. Another grapple. <laughs> nice flow over there. Working over the knee and the leg there. Possibly trying to neutralize a little bit of the power. Elbow bunt right across the jaw. Throws him to the ropes once again. Surprisingly, no one is bleeding yet in this match. Goes for that sleeper hold on the ground once again, but manages to get out fast. Neither of these guys are particularly good at submission artists. Nice gut buster takes him down, goes straight for the pin. Good idea. One, two, and a clean kick out. Oh, he's got him in a torture rack trying to work over that injured back. <laughs> and right into a backbreaker. Some nice straight punches to the jaw there. Yeah, <laughs> Doug is a bit of a stone golem and the bombs go off outside the ring. The ref is down and both competitors are bleeding buckets. In fact, Mr. Turok may be knocked out. I think he is dying of blood loss. Looks like, uh, yeah, Doug is just watching now, trying to get a breather here. I think Mr. Turok is dead. Yeah, the ref is calling for the bell. We got a knockout. Yeah, we got a knockout on that one. Honestly, I don't know how we didn't get a knockout as soon as, um, as soon as... <laughs> Doug threw Mr. Turok down on a sledgehammer, started elbow dropping the back of his skull. He's dead, Joker. I just assumed that was a he's a he's dead Jim reference. That was a brutal match. Next um next uh let's do um Let's do a cage death match. Let's do a cage death match. Escape only. So whoever gets into the cage first wins. We'll have Lydia for this one. All right, who's in this match? Mr. Turok wants another match. Okay, Mr. Turok, you get another match. Um, Swift Nipples. All right, we haven't had you in a match in a while. In Poland, nobody has this game. Nobody. Well, this game wasn't very didn't sell very well outside of Japan. So, here in Canada, no one has this game either. I had to buy it off Amazon. What? 
Oh, do you live in Poland? Uh, liver to Doros? D Drosy? Uh, I don't fucking know. Liver! Do you live in Poland? Because if so, uh, go over there and punch, uh, punch Wojtek1985 uh, for me. He's a douche. You live in Poland? I'm happy to see that I have a Polish viewer who's not a douchebag. Because I've had a bad track record so far with Polish viewers. A oh, nice float over out of the uh, vertical suplex attempt for Mr. Turk there. Taking down with the Snapmare Takeover. Circling each other a little bit in the ring. See, Polish people are in general awesome people. I like that. It's a back chop attempt. Missed the elbow bunt. Well, you they are, they are douchebags in every country, to be fair. Another Snapmare Takeover there by Swift Nipples. Uh, scoop Slam again by Mr. Turok. Looks like these two are really going in for the grapples this match. Arm drag takeover there. Lifts him back up by the hair, but he won't stay for long. Scoop slam returned there. Going for a nice arm lock. Rakes the eyes, though, I think. That already pulled the hair. Keep in mind that submissions, although they are good for wearing down the opponent... They will not get a tap out in this match. This match is escape only. No pinfalls or submissions. Although a knockout would help greatly if the opponent can't keep you from getting out of the ring. Another snapmare takeover. Running off the ropes. Looks like he was possibly going for some kind of running elbow draw. Nice jawbreaker there. Takes him down. Went for a pinfall, surprisingly enough, considering this is no pinfall match. Runs to the ropes. Bounces off the ropes. Ducks under. Steadies himself. Snapmare takeover in the corner. Looks like they're really, um, they're really going heavy with the light grapples in this early on. I say, as Mr. Truck does a nice jumping vertical suplex there, Bret Hart style, really plants him to the mat. Yeah, Doug has a mutant healing factor. Oh, looking for some corner grapple attempts. Some nice heavy knee lifts to the gut there in the corner by Swift Nipples. Locked him in the Scorpion Death Lock right on that chair, too. But he doesn't manage to keep him in for very long. Another scoop slam out of the corner. Goes right back to wearing down the arms. It looks like he could be trying to wear down the arms and legs of Mr. Turok to uh, keep him from being able to climb out of the ring. Vertical suplex there. Takes him back down. Goes for the leg, but gets kicked off. Nice heavy stomp right to the ribs there. And a gut buster by Swift Nipples. Irish whip to the ropes. And <laughs> goes for that nice front drop kick, but it looks like uh, Mr. Turk managed to get out of the way before getting scoop slammed back down to the mat. This game is awesome. It's my favorite wrestling game, and I love me some wrestling games. Nice jawbreaker there by Mr. Turk, and goes straight to working over the leg, trying to return the favor. Misses with a few hooks. Picks him up, and a nice power bomb there. Takes him down, goes to the top rope. Could be waiting for... A diving lariat right to the back of the skull takes down Mr. Turok. Mr. Turok manages to still get some momentum with that jawbreaker, but he's got to be reeling after that power bomb and lariat to the back of the head. Nice STO plants him right down to the mat and goes straight back to working over the knees, trying to neutralize the legs of Mr. Turok. Throws him off to the ropes. Goes for the front drop kick, and Mr. Turk gets out of the way once again. Scoop slam right down on that chair. Oh, hits him with that power bomb once again. Lifts him back up by the hair, but gets met with a punch to the gut. Thrown to the ropes. Ducks under it. Floats around the back. Gets him with a dragon suplex. An impressive su sequence there by Mr. Turok driving uh, Swift Nipples right down on the back of his own skull. Throws him back to the ropes. Goes around the back again. And this time with a nice amateur wrestling style takeover, some stomps to the kidneys. Rolls him over but gets thrown right back off. Thanks, Minecraft. Nice DDT there by, uh, by Swift Nipples. A stomp to the knees, possibly trying to wear him back down for that submission again. Floats out of the, out of the uh, vertical suplex, 
<laughs> grabbed again could be a power bomb, a third power bomb in this match, but he gets back up fast. Mr. Turok with the fighting spirit, but he gets dropped on his neck with that tire driver 91. Mr. Turok manages to still get back up and get that flying neck breaker. Goes around the back, and a nice German suplex whip, whip there. There's some real no cells going back and forth there. STO goes straight back into the uh, into the Scorpion Deathlock, trying to wear down the knees once again. DDT plants his head off the mat, and it looks like Swift Nipples is getting a much needed breather after that large sequence of moves. Surprisingly, neither of these guys have gone for a weapon yet. Fourth power bomb gets the sledgehammer and <laughs> drives the hilt right into the rib area. And another whack right across the back of the head. Could be a concussion at this point. STO plants him straight back into the mat and goes right back to wearing down the legs. Mr. Tark looks like he's in rough shape this match. Collapses from the punch and it looks like Swift Nipples is trying to escape the ring. This could be it! And it looks like this is gonna be it. There we go. Swift Nipples wins. After some nice power bombs and some sledgehammer shots. Alright, I guess the next match will be a landmine death match. Uh, Corner will be fluorescent light tubes. Lots of weapons. Got Charlie back for the ref of this one. No rope break. And, uh. We're gonna go back to Strange World. That sounds awesome. Uh, will there be any other uh, games streamed? Um, I'm not. I think I'm gonna end the stream soon because I think I'm gonna make dinner soon, actually. I'm pretty hungry. So uh, let's do one or two more matches, then end the stream. Uh, by the way, this entire thing will be recorded and uploaded over on YouTube if you want to rewatch anything you missed. My wrestling wall knowledge overwhelms you? Well, just <laughs> if I'm not recording or editing or playing a video game or streaming, I'm watching wrestling. I love me some wrestling. Could you do some big Japan wrestling matches? Now, what do you mean, what could you do? Because... Uh, Big Japan's in this game, of course, but... Usually on the streams, I like to show off the people who are in the chat, you know? Me versus Gotham. Uh, Mr. Shark, you've had enough matches already tonight. I like to kind of keep it to two people. I want to vary up the moveset and the variety and everything. However, we haven't had Gothnetic in. Um, I think Gothnetic isn't in the chat anymore, though, is he? Mark Henry versus Shelly. Yeah, he's, uh... I'm interested in sending an email if you make a character for me. Considering it. If you want to, go for it. Just as long as it's a real one. Uh, I think Gothanetic isn't in the stream anymore, else he would have said something by now. Uh, we haven't had Gamer in for a while. Let's uh, let's have Gamer in on this one. Swan Dive Body Attack is... Oh yeah, his finisher is the, uh, the Slingshot Body Dive. That's a cool move. Let's go him versus Vans the Bunker. Neither of them are here right now, but that should be a cool one. Uh, do I need just a photo? Uh, a photo or two? And if you want, if you know anything about wrestling and you have preferences, just let me know, like, what you would like your finishers to be or anything like that if you have a preference, and I'll make sure to put that in. Fight. All right, I'm cheering for Gamer on this one. I want him to hit his finish. No, actually, both of these guys have really kick-ass finishers now that I think about it. Ooh! Nowhere to go when you get your leg lifted like that and slapped right in the ear. Brutal move by Vans the Bunker there. He's going for a vertical suplex early, but doesn't manage to get it. In fact, Gamer counters with a vertical suplex of his own. This is a landmine death match, by the way, barbed wire style. So if you're thrown out of the ring, the ground is covered in barbed wire. If you're thrown into the turnbuckles, the turnbuckles are tables with propped up fluorescent light tubes. You'll get filled with glass. Throw into the ropes. Now, Gamer's definitely got the speed and agility advantage here, but Vans isn't worried about doing some cheap shots. You don't know anything about wrestling? Well, if you want to be in the game, I can think of some kind of creative moveset for you. Just send me the pictures and I'll make you. 
Nice heavy toe kick there, led him right into it. Nice scoop slam there by Vans the Bunker. Nice toe kick there, countered the punch. Looks like Gamer's trying to do some circling here. Gets taken down with a Dragon Whip. Heavy punch to the gut. Looks like Gamer is uh, not doing so well early on, although Vans keeps missing that spear attempt. Misses the drop kick, pick backed up. Got Vans with the, dr with the uh, toe kick right to the gut, though. Misses the spear once again. Vans really trying to hit the spear. Dragon Screw takes him back down to the mat. Misses the spear again! Wow! Scoop Slam, trying to wear him down a little bit. Goes for an early pinfall, but doesn't even get the one count. Although well, part of that is Charlie being out of position. Misses the drop kick. Thrown into the ropes. Oh, and he went right into the glass. Not bleeding yet, though. Nice rolling kick right to the gut. Pick, grabs him from behind and a rolling one right to the hip that time. Stomps the calf muscle. Nice uh, arm drag there. Gets the kendo stick. Could be trying to split him open with it. Doesn't quite get a chance there. Drops Vans with a vertical suplex. He's gonna go for the... No, not going for the kendo stick again. Only gets a one count off that pinfall. Yeah, Doug doesn't have speed, but he's got stamina. Nice kitchen sink! Goes running full speed right into the knee, gut first. That's gotta be a turning point in this match. And another knee strike to the gut. Goes straight for a sleeper hold in the ground to try and slow down the momentum of Gamer. Gamer manages to counter back a bit, but his ribs must be hurting. Spear attempt again, but just goes right into the ropes. That time, Van's thrown into the fluorescent light tubes. Another vertical suplex attempt, falls out of the ring, right into the barb- No, he just missed the barbed wire. Van's is lucky there, he almost got cut open. Oh, Nice! Rolling hills there by uh, Gamer, counter with an eye rake. It's a forward rolling Samoan drop, really rough on the ribs and back. Ooh, nice sit out face buster. Van's thrown into the light tubes, thrown to him again. He's bleeding from the forehead. That's gotta hurt his stamina. He's gonna run out of uh, momentum fast, losing blood like that. Oh, misses the rolling wheel kick. Could this be the opportunity he needs? Get some space with that gut punch. Smack right across the face, pulls him back up by the hair. Throws him into the ropes, they collide in the corner. Looks like Vans might have thrown himself into those light tubes again. Front face lock, Gamer trying to take control. Nice guillotine leg drop right across the back of the head. Goes for the Inzagiri but misses. Grapple from height and a jumping headbutt to the back of the skull. That's gotta hurt. Nice jackknife power bomb there. Two? Only a two count by Gamer. Gamer thrown into another light tube, bounds off the ropes, but managed to get bands that time with the knee strike to the gut. The music in this game is amazing. Ooh, nice head scissors there. Oh, he almost led Vans into spearing through that table full of, uh, ooh, right into the barbed wire. Looks like Gamer's bleeding now. All right, both of them are losing blood fast. This match won't last much longer. Nice, nice head scissors takedown there. High angle too. Face buster right off the wooden plank and goes for the cover. One, two. Only a two count. My throat is killing. Manhattan drop right across the groin. Front face lock takeover. Could be trying to get him into the corner. If Gamer can hit a big move, he might be able to get his finisher. He needs him standing and dazed to get his finisher. I mean, he could get him just off the ground, but it'd be pretty lucky. Nice ankle lock with a grapevine there, but he gets kicked off. Well, misses the, misses the spear once again. Scoop slam hard down onto the mat. This is a close match. I'm liking this one. Vertical suplex right onto that kendo stick. That's gotta hurt. Oh, face poster right off the kendo stick. No, counters and rolls through with that nice chicken wing arm lock. 
That was an amazing counter by Vans the Bunker. Rolling wheel kick, but Vans manages to get out of the way. Grapple in the middle to ring in a jawbreaker. Nails him back down, cracking his teeth. Grapple from behind. Rolls him up with a schoolboy pin. One, two. Only gets the two count. He almost got him there with the roll up. Head scissors take down. Spikes his head off the bat. Goes right back to the head scissors, trying to choke him out. Manages to get back out of it and push him off once again and grapple in the corner. And some heavy knee lifts. Rain to the gut. Hooks the far leg of the head. One, two. And almost a three count once again off that one. Grapple throws him to the ropes. Drop toe gets him down near the ropes. And a, and a guillotine leg drop right off the back of the head. Rolls him back over. Doesn't decide to hook the legs on his cover. Could be a mistake as Van the Bunker manages to kick out. Nice! Arm breaker right off the shoulder is gonna wear him down, possibly going for that chicken wing arm lock again. Face Buster right in the corner, floors him, rolls him over. One, two. I wanna remind you both that both of these competitors are losing buckets of blood. A tiger neck whip suplex there, grabs him behind, hits him with the finisher! This could be it! And a knockout for Vans the Bunker! Wow! That was a nice sequence near the end. <laughs> oh. Water is nice. Oh, I'm out of tea. My throat kills. I need a hot drink. One more match. One more match of the night. And I think... I think we all know who I'm gonna pick. That was a nice match. I am happy with how that went. That was a fun match. Oh man, my throat hurts, but uh, near the end there. That was good. No, no, sorry, Joker. Sorry, Joker, you versus Doug. As awesome as that would be, I do have something in mind. Tag match? You know what? Yeah. But I should be a wrestling commentator, it would be fun. Hey, I've done commentary and wrestling videos before, although it was a long time ago. And soon enough, you guys need to start checking out uh, The Ultimate Markout on YouTube at Sox Mahoney's wrestling channel, because I will be doing commentary on there live on his streams in the future, and they all get uploaded there. In fact, he's already made me as a wrestler over there, Madrat Stowe, my regular, my real name, which is what I go by on his channel. And, uh, yeah, so you guys will be seeing me competing in his brand as well as doing commentary. There's one on sale in Canada. Yeah, if you want to buy this game, Amazon is the way to go. Tag team match. Tag team with myself. And Brandon Moore Zero. And, uh, we're gonna fight Doug. And, uh, who else- who else from the chat won their match today? Uh, who did Joker fight again? I'm trying to remember. Who fought who? Okay. Doug won his match, right? Who- who won their matches in the chat? I forget already. No, I don't watch basketball. Uh, Gamer. Did Gamer just- no, Gamer just lost his match. Uh, Vans won his match. Why is everyone saying Gamer? Guys, Gamer lost. Gamer got knocked out by Vans. There we go. Vans and Doug against myself and Brandon. Tag team match. Good luck, Doug. So, I'm going for those handsome young devils of, uh, the Dry Bread and Brandon War Zero. For any of you new to the chat, or to the streams, to the wrestling streams at least, that's me in the ring there, with Doug. I'm the one with the longer hair and the beard. Unfortunately, shoulder-length hair is the longest hair goes in this game. My hair in reality is actually basically to my hips now. 
So uh, I'm just waiting for me to hit the wrist lock fisherman suplex and get the win in this match, or maybe even the uh, the bulldog. Oh, oh, taking out early. This is a good idea. Yeah, see, this is good tactics here, taking out to Brandon early. Brand of the team. Yes! Powerbomb neckbreaker combo by the two of us. And there should be some heavy punches thrown here. Nice scoop slam by Brandon Warzero. Picks him back up. Some clubbing blows to the sides of the head. Nice beard, Madre. Thank you. Nice diamond clash there. <laughs> and he ducked under the, uh, the spear. Pulls him away from the ropes. Goes for that nice Canadian sharpshooter, wearing down the legs a bit. Neither of us are exactly the biggest submission artists, but we're Canadian. We have to have the sharpshooter. Looks like Vans the Bunker is now the legal man, so both people have tagged out. Tests of strength under the ring, tests of strength versus computer, and everything seems to work. Sleeper hold out of the uh, Irish whip there by Vans the Bunker, trying to perhaps uh, take down the stamina early on. Scoop slam to Brandon War Zero. It might be nice for him to tag out. My throat is killing me, I've gotta say. That's why I usually end the streams with wrestling commentary, because it kills my throat. Nice! Double axe handle right across the back. Clubbing blow across the jaw. Tests the strength in the corner. Goes for a hook, but it doesn't quite work. Another clubbing blow across the face. Vans throws him into the turnbuckle, but not the right turnbuckle. He doesn't want to keep him in his partner's turnbuckle. Scoop slam and a nice jumping fist to drop right across the head. Dragon screw takedown gets Brandon back down to the mat. Grabs him by the hair and throws him back into the friendly turnbuckle. Backs up. Could be trying to get some momentum for a lariat there, but it didn't quite work. Nice full swing slap across the face there by Vans the Bunker. Missed the hook. <laughs> nice chop right across the face and a knee drop right to the groin. Looks like they're both really trying to get a corner move here, but it's just not working. Nice chop block there, sweeping out the back of the knee with that clothesline. Might be in Brandon War's best interest here to tag out. I do say so myself. Also, for all of you wondering, for some reason... Oh, diving fist drop right to the gut, that's gotta hurt. Um, Shadow Run to returns. Nice! Brandon hits his finisher there, the choke lift Sido Powerbomb 2, and a 2.9 almost gets the victory already. Uh, Shadow Run returns on Steam right now, is in fact having an update. Oh, he's got him up. Gets him with that Diamond Clash once again. Some nice heavy elbow shots there to Vans the Bunker. Get some space again. Ooh! And takes him to the mat hard with that elbow strike. Runs off the ropes. It looks like he was going for that lariat there. Ah, he shouldn't have let Vans tag out. Vans was almost done. Doug's got him up there. Nice gorilla press and throws him down face first into the mat. Rolls him over and hooks the leg. Only gets a one count. Diamond Clash again drives his stomach and face down to the mat. But that's not going to be the pinfall, not too close to the ropes like that. Nice implant DDT drives him straight down as I get a bunch of emails. Kicks out of the pin though at two. Uh, that beeping is when I get an email from YouTube. Which means I'm probably getting either a lot of emails from you guys wanting to be made in the game, nice elbow drops. That or you're he hearing a lot of emails of me getting subscribers and comments. I still have it turned on that I get an email for every single comment. Believe it or not, I read every comment. And I get... I get, um, usually about 70 to 120 a day. Oh! Went for the Gutbuster. Madragora gets him out of it, though. I didn't see... Uh, I was paying attention to the email for a second if I got the tag there. 
Nice choke slam there by Brandon Warrior Zero. Looks like it, there was a legal tag here. So the uh, the the T or the internet champion, the driver, right back in the ring. Nice twisting elbow drop, running off the ropes to the back of the head. He's going for the wrist lock fisherman suplex, but it looks like he's in the ropes. So it's a clean kick out, or a rather a breakup. Huge Glasgow kiss with that headbutt there, floors Madri Bread, picks him back up by the hair. Madri Bread coming back in and hits him with a nice Iron Claw STO. Nice! With that twisting senton. Gets him right back in that Canadian sharpshooter, but he gets out of it quickly. The legs have not been worn down enough. Exploder Suplex takes him back down to the mat, runs off the ropes, and it looks like he could be going for an elbow drop there. His Irish whip back into the ropes and manages to stabilize himself. Russian Leg Sweep takes him back down, but he's going for a pinfall too close to the ropes. Another Russian Leg Sweep takes him back down to the mat. Grapple from behind, gets him in here, and leads him in for a big headed butt by Brandon War Zero, and a nice hook there. Double back grapple, but could have spilt death there for for um, for Doug, but Doug manages to get both of them off of him. Gets his foot on the rope after that. Fisherman suplex, a nice swinging neck breaker, plants his head into the mat, but manages to get another foot on the rope. He's got to tag out. Fisherman suplex, one, two, and Vans the bunker manages to break it up. Oh. Double team there on the drive right with a double vertical suplex brings down the legal man. The driver manages to hit a nice standing drop kick that floors Vans the bunker and gets him out of the ring. Nice checking jab there. Elbow strike right to the back of the head. Oh, nice back drop driver folds him right on his neck. Iron Claw STO follows up on that injured neck once again. Once again, he's in the ropes. Doug desperately needs to tag out. Sweeps out the leg, signaling this could be it. Nice, nice uh, palm strike right across the jaw. One, two, and a clean kick out. Vans didn't even decide to help his partner there. Exploder suplex right into the ropes. But his feet are under the ring ropes. Cannot get a legal pin here. Elbow bunt right across the jaw. Doug is not going for a tag out yet. Nice heavy elbow drop right across the chest. Punched right in the jaw, picked back up from behind. This could be it. Drop kick right across the back of the skull. And he's going for a roll up pin, but he kicks out. Oh. It's, it, it looks like there's a Donnie Brook in the middle of the, or in the corner of the ring. Swinging neckbreaker to Vans the Bunker, and a brain buster right back down on the injured neck of Doug. Doug manages to get back up to be met with a nice tiger suplex. One, two, and a clean kick out, impossibly by Doug. Belly to belly suplex, low angle, throws him back down onto his shoulders, runs the ropes, running STO, plants him back under the mat, going for another pinhole, without hooking the leg. One, two, and a clean kick out by Doug again. Doug's OP is a stone golem. Russian leg sweep. One, two, and once again does not manage to put him away. Doug, or Brandon Wars here out of nowhere with that nice, nice uh, full Nelson slam. Huge punch right across the jaw. The driver going to the top rope. Hits him with a diving splash. One, two, and a clean kick out once again. Takes him back down. He's for a chicken wing face lock on the ground, and he doesn't tap out. He manages to slip out once again. Doug is still not done. Doug is invincible. Brain buster for the second time. Doug needs to tag back out to Vans the Bunker. Standing draw kick floors him once again. Goes with a big boot and misses a checking jab. Hits, throws him to the ropes, bounces off the ropes for his own momentum. Hits him with a shoulder block, knocks him down. Big elbow drop right across the upper chest. Dodges the drop kick. It looks like he's getting some momentum back, but he's met with another heavy elbow strike right across the back of the head. Drops him right back down to the mat. He desperately needs to tag out. He gets a headbutt. Gets a little bit of space, another elbow, elbow drop. Doug needs to tag out to Vans. He's met with that Iron Claw STO. 
in the quick leg hook. Vans breaks up the pin, however, and manages to ward off Brandon War Zero there with a nice jawbreaker. Doug hits the nice, huge swing headbutt there. Yeah, Doug's John Cena-ing this one up. Kicking out of everything. Oh, double leg takeover there. But Doug manages to push him back off before he locks in that Canadian sharpshooter. Ooh! And right to the back of the head with those heavy elbow drops. It looks like Doug is actually dealing some serious damage here. Catches him with that nice side suplex, drops him hard down on his lower back. Planted right back down to the map with that Iron Claw STO, grabs him from behind, but gets met with a jawbreaker. Another heavy headbutt. <laughs> Dev De De Tycoon went pretty well earlier today until I went bankrupt. One, two, and a clean kick out by my dry bread. Goes for a pin of his own. One, two, only a two count once again. Brandon War Zero in the background there hits a nice running splash to Vans the Bunker. Swinging neck breaker by Madrai Bread. Signature maneuver. One, two, and a clean kick out once again. Doug is unkillable. Looks like they could have been going for that powerbomb neck breaker once again, but it didn't quite work. Brandon hits his nice sit out spine buster, wearing down the back. Grapple in the middle, but Doug hits his finisher out of nowhere with that Russian leg, uh, Russian leg sweep face buster. Two, but Brandon War Zero manages to break it up. Are they going for a double grapple again? Nope. Drop kick right across the point of the jaw. Huge swing punch right to the back of the skull there. Floors Doug, and Doug is still not going to his corner. And uh, Madriper managed to take back out of Brandon, who's immediately met with a gut buster. This is not good. Good. Now that Brandon's tagged down, Brandon definitely has been resting a lot more. He's got more stamina. Madrep Red has decided no, he does not want to come into the ring right now. Is thrown Brandon's thrown back into his own corner, but kicked back out of it. Could be going for a running splash! Drops all of his weight across the chest. One, two, and a clean kick out right before Vance goes to break it up. Oh, scoop slam takes Vans down to the down to the mat once again. Looks like Brandon might be trying to put away Vans once and for all, but but uh, Doug manages to break it up. Doug going off the ropes that time, but doesn't have the momentum to get to him. A series of four brutal headbutts takes Brandon down to the mat. He's completely dazed. He was met with a Russian hook right across the jaw and an elbow drop right across the upper chest. One, two, and a clean kick out. Oh. Implant DDT. And... Takes him over with an inverted headlock takeover there. Rolls him over, going for the pin. One, two... And still has not gotten a 2.9. Hits his finisher on Brandon War Zero. Hits his finisher on the tribe Red. Oh my god. He's laying waste to them. Oh, roll a pin, but not by the legal man. Oh my god. Oh, Vans the Bunker manages to get uh, Brandon War out of the way there. Another huge swing headbutt, but it looks like Doug is completely out of momentum at this point. But he is still refusing to tag out to Vans. Vans has hardly wrestled in this match. He is completely fresh. He's wrestled. He's been in the ring maybe five minutes of this whole match as a legal competitor. He's got stamina. Nice full Nelson slam, and that might spell the end. No finisher. Right in the middle of the ring. Nowhere near the ropes. One. Two. The dry bread manages to break it up. Russian leg sweep takes down Vans of the Bunk. Runs off the ropes with a nice jumping splash. Ultimate warrior style right to the back. Vans is actually met with a backdrop driver there, getting him out of the ring quite injured, possibly. Another headbutt takes down Brandon War Zero. Doug will not tag out. <laughs> wow.
Another clean kick out by Doug. Oh, Brain Buster on Doug. He's clutching at his neck. He must be injured at this point. And Brandon sees the injury. He's going for the Lariat. Nails him right in the neck. One, two, and a clean kick out once again. Swinging neck breaker. <laughs> the Brandon War and Madriver would clearly see the injury to the neck and are trying to focus on it. He hits his finisher on both of them once again and goes for a sleeper hold, but not on the legal man. Trying to injure their necks too, yes, he does need to be nerfed. A series of four headbutts to Brandon War Zero. Brings him right back down to the mat. He hasn't split him open, surprisingly enough. Coconut Crush takes him back down to the map. Could be going for that Larry again. No, he's just clubbing him over the head with some heavy strikes, boxing the ears. Oh my god. Oh, Vince is going to the top. <laughs> Vince, Vince slipped. Even he's out of stamina. This match has been going on so long. Vince slipped on the rope. Canadian sharpshooter, but he might be able to reach the ropes from here. He reached the ropes. That was good. He might have, <laughs> he might have been it. Nailed with the face buster once again, but he's too close to the ropes. He gets the rope break. That could be a pinfall there. Face buster again. And he's going for the torture rack, but he might be able to reach the ropes. Yes, he reaches the ropes, so he counters into a back breaker. Jesus. Another full swing headbutt. Picks him up back up by the beautiful hair. And nice chop block. Knocks at the back of his knee, runs off the ropes. Does not have this, he is too slow from having no momentum. He's got a torture rack, not on the ropes this time. Another nice backbreaker. Oh, oh, scoop brain buster. Could be a concussion or even a knockout. Two and a legal three. He does kick out rate right of three, but the three count was counted. Brandon War Zero pins him with the scoop brain buster. Jesus! If Doug had tagged out much sooner, things might have ended differently. We've already seen this night how well uh, Vans can do when Vans got the knockout. Earlier this night, Vans got the knockout on Gamer in that uh, landmine deathmatch with the uh, high speed elbow drop. <laughs> Doug says, not my fault! Uh, but Drive Red and Brandon won the match, but I think that Doug came out looking like the strongest competitor. It's one of those matches where you lost, but I, you walk away with everyone thinking you're the winner. And I, I'd imagine that, uh... I'd imagine that, uh, Vans is not terribly happy, as if Vans... T if Vans got tagged in, the match could have ended very differently, but Doug refused to tag. I don't think those two are going to be tagging anymore. They don't seem to get along. Yeah, it took two of us to put down him down, and it wasn't even like he was just lucky and always getting to the ropes. Doug, more often than not, was doing clean kickouts, not rope breaks, and surviving. Like, he was being put in submissions in the center of the ring and slipping out of them, he was being dropped with brain busters and lariats and kicking out at two and a half. <sighs> All right, I think a few people emailed me now about wanting to be in the game, so the next stream we might have like two or three new characters. Keep in mind, guys, that not all of you will be made. Well, maybe not all of you will be made by the next episode of this stream. Because even mind, it does take- I spend a lot of time on making sure the people look accurate and the movesets are good and the AI is good. So sometimes it does take three to four hours to make one of you guys, so... Keep in mind that it is- I do put a lot of effort into you guys, so... It might take a while before you see your guy, but when I do make your guy, they'll be really damn well made. Ooh. Oh my god, my throat hurts. I can't talk anymore, so thank you all for watching. I hope you guys really enjoyed this episode. I had a lot of fun doing this stream. 
If you're watching this live and you're new, check out the description below the Twitch video you're watching where you can see my YouTube where I've been doing a video a day for over two years now, as well as all my other stuff like follow me on Twitter because I tweet funny things sometimes, and follow me on Facebook because I link funny things sometimes. Follow the Steam group where I send out, send out live updates of whenever I'm going to stream so you don't need to obsessively check your email or YouTube just to see when I'm streaming. All you need is to have uh, Steam open and be in the Steam group. And if you're watching the recording on YouTube, check out the description to see the Twitch, the link to the Twitch stream where you can catch the next stream live and be a part of the chat. I hope you guys enjoyed and until next time, have a nice day.